Your commitment to furthering your career as a regulatory professional is evidenced by your interest in pursuing the RAC credential. This presentation will provide you with some background on the RAC exams and help you better organize and prepare for the examination. We will start with a review of the exams, the content of each exam, and the types of questions you will be answering. Knowing as much as you can about the exam will help you prepare. An example of each of the three types of questions on the exam will be provided with general guidance on how you might formulate your response. Next, we will look at how to develop a study plan and organize your review and preparation. Then we will address exam day, what to expect, and approaches to overcoming anxiety and answering questions. We will also summarize what to expect after the exam, how exams are scored, and when and how you will be informed of your results. At the conclusion, we will direct you to resources for further information. No matter which RAC examination you are taking, keep in mind that it covers regulated healthcare products, including biopharmaceuticals, medical devices, and in vitro diagnostics. There is an equal balance of device and pharmaceutical questions. In addition, about 25% of questions relate to general regulatory thinking and decision making and are not specific to a product type. The RAC exams are updated annually by committees of regulatory professionals who hold the RAC credential. The exams cover regulations that were in effect as of December 31st of the previous year. Keep in mind that the RAC exams require you to know the regulations and apply your knowledge to the type of critical thinking required in your job. The outline and specifications for the RAC examinations are developed from extensive studies of regulatory professionals' roles and responsibilities in industry, regulatory agencies, and other work settings. From these studies, we know that professionals address regulatory issues throughout the product life cycle, from research and development, through clinical stages, registration, manufacturing and quality, labeling, advertising, post-market surveillance, and compliance. In addition, other core functions of the regulatory professional include due diligence, crisis management, regulatory intelligence and strategy, trade issues, and negotiations. In developing the RAC examinations, these roles are organized into major areas called domains, which largely reflect stages in the product life cycle from strategic planning through pre- and post-approval tasks. The domains of the RAC exam's content are shown here, along with the number of questions on each area. A detailed outline of the areas covered within each domain is available in the RAC Candidate Guide in the content outline for each examination. It is important to note that examination questions relate to the tasks presented in these outlines. However, there is not always a question for each specific task listed in the content outline. There are three types of questions on the RAC exams. Recall, application, and analysis. Recall questions ask you to provide specific information and typically ask about regulations that are of particular importance. These questions may relate to regulations that apply throughout a product life cycle. They may apply to all products or to a product type, such as medical devices or pharmaceuticals. 25% of the exam questions will be recall. The best way to prepare for recall questions is to read reference materials, such as fundamentals of regulatory affairs and materials available through your organization, and to review specific regulatory documents. The other two question types, application and analysis, represent 75% of the RAC exam questions. Application questions require you to relate specific knowledge to a situation you are likely to encounter in your job. These questions may inquire about steps in the regulatory process where you seek information and how you might apply your knowledge. 50 to 55% of RAC exam questions are considered application type questions. Analysis questions are the most complex questions on the exam. These often are presented as cases or examples requiring you to read and assemble information in order to identify and evaluate various solutions. 20 to 25 percent of the examination will be questions of this type. Most of these questions will reflect complex situations you face in your work which require you to use your knowledge and logic to reach solutions. Both application and analysis questions require you to apply critical thinking which is what you do as a regulatory professional. Let's look at a sample of each question type. This is an example of a recall question that might appear on the EU examination. The question itself is straightforward and asks how long technical documentation on a medical device must be retained. The correct answer is B. This question is based on the European Medical Devices Directives, specifically Annex 2, Section 6.1, 
Annex 3, Section 7.3, and Annex 7, Section 2. If you cannot recall the specific requirements, what might you look for? First, as a regulatory professional, your intuition might tell you that technical documentation will probably need to be retained for a period of time after manufacturing is discontinued since the product will remain in use. Thus, you can eliminate A. C and D address the product's lifetime. You might ask yourself whether lifetime is typically included in documentation requirements. If not, you can eliminate these responses. This would leave B as the alternative. If you are not certain about the answer, you will be able to mark the question and return to it. This question relates to U.S. regulations. In reading the question, you first note that it focuses on a Class II medical device. The next key fact is that a competitor has a product on the market with certain additional features. The suture dissolves. Your company can make a change in the characteristics of your current approved product so that it, too, dissolves. At this point, look at what you know. A Class II medical device, your company has an approved product, and a competitor has an approved product with features you want to add to your company's product. What do you need to submit to FDA to introduce your dissolvable suture? If you know the medical device regulations, you will know this is a new intended use, and thus, for this product, you will need to submit a 510K, answer A. B and C are not correct, as periodic and annual reports do not apply to Class II devices. D is incorrect because this is not just a labeling change. This question poses several situations. First, you have an approved base product that is a medical device in one country, Y. Your company also has an enhanced version that includes a biologic coating and is approved in a second country, Z, where it is classified as a medical device. You have been asked to develop a plan to have the coated product approved in country Y where the uncoated device is available. First, you may consider that there are differences in how combination products, in this case a product that includes a device and biologic, are classified in different countries. Country Z classified the device-drug combination as a device, but not all countries will view this product the same way. Let us look at the possible responses. Response A indicates that you will prepare and submit dual submissions, both as a device and a pharmaceutical or medicinal product. This will require extensive work and expense. Is this the best way to begin your regulatory plan? Response B suggests that you go ahead and submit the product to country Y as a device, relying on the fact that it is classified as a device in country Z. Your regulatory experience should suggest this is not a viable first step. Product classifications are not the same in all countries or regions. Response C indicates that you submit the drug component of the product for review as a separate pharmaceutical. This response has several limitations. First, you do not have information on whether the drug used for the coating is already approved in the country. Therefore, submitting it as a standalone drug may not be warranted. Second, review of this product will require assessment of the combined characteristics of its components. Response D is the correct response and the most logical first step. For any submission, the regulatory professional should first consider the product's characteristics and use and examine the regulations, guidelines, and previous history for similar products in the target country. These elements are important first steps for any product. While this more detailed question addressed a combination product and a more complex situation, you will note that the correct answer reflects critical and logical decision making. Even if you are not familiar with the specific regulations for this product type, you can use your experience and knowledge to select a logical answer. With these perspectives in mind, let us consider some approaches for preparing for the exam. It is important for you to develop a study plan that is suited to you, your education, and previous experience, since these will help shape your study plan and indicate where you need to spend more time and effort. To begin, take an open and honest look at your experience and knowledge base. It is useful to consider your regulatory experience and your current scope of responsibilities, what types of products you have worked with, and whether your knowledge and experience will extend throughout the product life cycle. This will help you to determine the areas where you first need to develop a knowledge base before moving to a level of applied understanding. Even if you are a very experienced professional, consider areas in which you no longer work regularly. You may need to refresh your basic knowledge. Sometimes, experienced professionals do not realize where things have changed. If you are new to regulatory, with less than three years of experience, you may need to develop your own knowledge base and locate a professional who can help you move into how regulations are applied in the work environment. 
Use this information to create a personal study plan or map. Set goals for your learning and determine the amount of time you will need to reach these goals. Prioritize material as most unfamiliar, difficult to easy, and familiar, and schedule review of the unfamiliar, most difficult, for times when you are freshest and most alert. You may find it useful to begin building a knowledge base for new areas first, so you can return to them often over the course of your preparation. Plan your time. Look at the time frame before your scheduled exam. Then look at how many days and how much time on each of these days you can devote to study. You may find it more effective to schedule blocks of time, typically no more than three hours per study session. Using your priorities and map, you can allocate time to specific days. Also, think about how much reading, note-taking, and self-evaluation you will need, and be sure to build this into your plan. Allow sufficient time in study sessions to review what you have already learned. Try to conduct some of your review with a group of other test takers. If that is not possible, schedule time with a colleague to at least review the highlights of your study outline. As a last resort, talk to anyone who will listen about what you are learning. Talking about the information in an organized fashion will help you become more familiar with it. Reassess your knowledge regularly. Many useful tools for each exam can be accessed through the RAC pages on the RAPS website. The Fundamentals books are excellent references for your general use and for exam preparation. For the General Scope exam, in addition to Fundamentals of International Regulatory Affairs, you may find it useful to review the pocket guides of GHTF, ICH, and WHO documents. In areas where you need to build a knowledge base, the self-paced online learning modules available from RAPS online university courses and archived webcasts can be very effective. You can choose the modules best suited to your individual needs. For example, if your career has focused on pharmaceuticals or biologics, it may be helpful to take one or two more courses dealing with medical devices. You may also consider modules in life cycle areas with which you may not be very familiar. In addition, RAPS offers online practice examinations to help you prepare. These are not old RAC exams and are not written by the committees that develop the RAC exams. They are developed by colleagues who have earned the RAC credential. These practice exams are intended to help familiarize you with the type and range of questions and give you the opportunity to time yourself while taking an examination. You may retake the practice examinations as many times as you wish. RAPS also maintains information on lo local study groups that are forming and provides tools for individuals seeking to start a group. Your organization may sponsor RAC study groups or you may be able to identify a colleague with the RAC who can assist you in your study effort. RAP's social media platform, RegX, also hosts online study groups. If you are taking the RAC examination, you will be learning new material and looking at what is familiar to you in new ways. Here are a few general suggestions that may enhance your study experience. Read and listen actively. Pay attention and concentrate on the material. It is important not to let your mind drift to what is happening at work or at home. Recognize that you can learn and understand the material, even if it concerns products or domains that are not part of your current job. Relate what you are studying to what you already know. You may find it helpful to relate it to the products and work of your current organization, to the functions and people whom you know and with whom you interact, and to the work undertaken by your colleagues and supervisor. Develop and maintain interest in what you are studying. This material will advance your knowledge and capabilities as a regulatory professional. Of course, allow sufficient time to study and prepare. Ideally, allow six months for your studies. This gives you flexibility to accommodate other demands on your time and allows sufficient time to learn and review new materials. Develop a regular study schedule. Make it an appointment if you can, and be sure you keep your personal study appointments. Try to schedule multiple study periods each week. Some may be shorter for reading and reviewing, while others may be longer. Generally, keep even your longest study periods to three hours or less. Try to be in a comfortable, quiet location, free from distractions. The RAC exam is not heavily weighted on memorization. However, there are certain laws, regulations, and general process steps that you will want to remember. Here are a few memory techniques you may find helpful. Most people rely on several memory techniques. Overlearning is useful for most people, but be sure to select the techniques that work best for you. This section provides some important perspectives about both scheduling and taking your exam. 
It is important to remember that you must submit the RAC application online by fax or by mail by the final application deadline. Late applications are not accepted and will be returned or transferred to the next cycle. You will receive email notification within 10 days of receipt if your application is accepted. Once your application is approved, you will receive notification from the exam administration company, Castle Worldwide, with instructions for scheduling your exam appointment. They will send you a web link, username, and password that will give you access to exam scheduling information. When you schedule your exam, be sure to note the date, time, and location. Save the email from Castle Worldwide so you can access your exam information again later if necessary. Keep in mind that exam time slots may be Come full, so don't delay scheduling your appointment. It may not be possible to accommodate appointment requests that are made late in the testing window. Any changes to your appointment are made through CASEL and not through the RAC office. Fees may be associated with changing your appointment. Finally, be sure to make note of your exam appointment. You will not receive a reminder from CASEL or the RAC program about your appointment. It is your responsibility to remember the details. If you miss your appointment, you may not be able to reschedule and will be recorded as a no-show. Here are a few basic principles for getting yourself ready for exam day. First, be well rested. Don't stay up all night studying. If you are rested, you are likely to be more relaxed and will perform better. Don't go to the exam with an empty stomach. Eat healthy foods that will sustain you through the two-hour testing period. Remember, no food or drinks are allowed in the examination room, and if you need to use the bathroom, this will count in the exam period. Thus, avoid any food or beverages that may distract you from the exam. Allow plenty of time to get to the examination site. Plan on arriving at the testing site about 30 minutes prior to your appointment. You will not be able to bring any materials, such as a computer, mobile phone, book, or any notes, into the testing room. If you have these materials, they will be stored for you. You will be asked to show a photo ID that must correspond to the name you provided on your RAC application. Please contact RAC program staff if there are any changes or if you have questions about ID requirements. Do not wait until test day to do so if you do not have identification. After your appointment and ID are confirmed, you will be seated in a testing room or cubicle. You will have a whiteboard and marker available next to the computer to write notes and or make notations for yourself while taking the exam. We will talk more about tips for making notes in a few minutes. The RAC exams are administered on a computer with a standard keyboard and mouse. Prior to beginning the exam, you will see an online demonstration and instructions on how to use the computer-based testing system. However, here is a review of the basics. The RAC examination questions appear on a screen like this. The question with its corresponding number appears here. The potential answers appear here. To select a response, move the mouse to the corresponding circle and click. Your selection appears as a black dot in the circle. To change your response, click on another circle. The top of the screen provides tools for you to advance to the next question, return to a question, or mark a question for later review. The best tool for success on the RAC exam is being well prepared. But here are a few additional tips that may guide your test taking experience. Read each question carefully. It is a good idea to read the question twice to be sure you clearly understand what is being asked. Note any words that are capitalized, such as least, most, first. These indicate that you will be required to offer the best response with the strong possibility that more than one response may relate to the topic. Many questions on the RAC exam include a type of product, such as a medical device or pharmaceutical. In some cases, the question is asking for regulations specific to that product type. However, many questions using a product type are really testing your knowledge of good regulatory process. So, when you read a question, be sure you understand what the question really asks. There is a tendency to become more anxious when answering questions that appear to be about products outside your current job function. If the question asks for a logical sequence, for example, what you should do first, think about the sequence in which that work or information occurs in product development and the regulatory process. If a question asks you to select the best action, read the alternatives carefully. Think about which action or information will apply most often. If a question asks for an exception, what would not be used or least likely be used, again carefully review the responses and think about what action is typically taken. You will often find one answer that does not fit into that step in the regulatory process. Before you read the options, 
quickly think about what the answer might be. This may help you as you read the potential responses. Read over all the potential answers carefully. Don't just click on the first answer that seems to be correct. There may be a better answer. Avoid overanalyzing the responses. Don't read too much into the answer. For many items, you will respond easily. For some, you will select the answer that seems to be the best fit, but you may want to review your response later. If you cannot decide on an answer, leave it blank and mark it for review by mark clicking the Mark button. You may find it helpful to make a note on the whiteboard about what the particular question is asking and the item number. As you proceed with the examination, other questions and responses may help clarify your thinking. You can return to the question at any time by using the Go To button and filling in the question number, or you can return to it at the end of the examination. Don't stop. If you are stumped by a question, mark it and move on to the next one. Otherwise, you will lose valuable time and may be rushed later in the exam. Don't look for answer patterns. The testing approach used for the RAC exam ensures that questions and correct responses do not fall into patterns. Contrary to some myths, C will not necessarily be the most frequent answer. Don't use the length of an answer as a clue. The longer answer is not always the correct one, and the RAC exam committees work hard to balance the length of response options. Exam questions are not presented in any predetermined order. Don't be thrown if the first question relates to the post-marketing area. If you are not sure about an answer, here are some steps you can take. See whether you can eliminate any answers. For example, if the question relates to a preclinical step in product development, but one answer is a post-market reporting requirement, you can eliminate that option from consideration. If two options are opposite, one of them can be eliminated. Use your best reasoning to identify the one that's not fit. If you still cannot decide on an answer, move on and come back to the question later. Use educated guesses. On any exam, you will be confronted with questions that seem totally or partially unfamiliar. You may also be faced with many unanswered questions and limited time to complete the exam. In either case, your best option is to guess. It is better to guess than to leave the item blank. Try to make an informed guess, that is, try to eliminate options that do not fit. Budget your time and don't rush. Candidates usually find that they have sufficient time to answer all questions and then to review their responses. If you go blank, mark the question and return to it later. Move around in your seat periodically to make yourself more comfortable. Finally, do not worry if others finish before you. There is nothing gained by being the first to finish, and keep in mind that others around you may be taking a different exam. Expect some anxiety. It's a reminder that you want to do your best and can keep you energized. Just keep it manageable. Relax. Take slow, deep breaths. Pause. Think about the next step and keep on task. Use positive reinforcement. Acknowledge that you have done and are doing your best. Realize that managing anxiety can be a tool for success. After the exam, it is natural to wonder how you did and to analyze your performance. It is also natural to think the exam contained items that were unfamiliar to you or had more questions in one product area than another. Put these thoughts aside and relax. The RAC exams are not scored at the testing site. They are scored and analyzed by the testing contractor and then by the exam committee. You can expect to receive results within four to six weeks of the close of the testing window. You will be notified by email how to confidentially access your exam score and outcome. After all candidates are notified, the names of those who pass the exam are posted on the RAPS website. There is no listing of individuals who do not pass the exam. The passing score for the RAC exams is based on a statistical cut score method. More information about this widely used approach is available on the RAC website. The typical cut score for the RAC exams is 75. Like most professional certification examinations, the RAC exams are challenging and are not designed to allow everyone to pass. If you do not pass, you are encouraged to continue your studies and consider taking the examination again in the near future. Please spend time reviewing materials on the RAC pages of the RAPS website and refer to preparation and study tools available from RAPS. To access detailed exam outlines, candidate guides, and other helpful resources, be sure to visit the RAC website at raps.org RAC. For a complete list of tools to help you in your final preparation, click on the resources links for the exam you are taking. You may contact staff who can answer your RAC-related questions by emailing certification at raps.org.